Hey everyone, I'm Ratchet. Uh, thanks for checking out my blog, RatchetBrews.com. Uh, today I'm doing a special video blog and I'm going to walk you through each step of the way of me making my fall seasonal butternut squash ale. Uh, let me tell you a little bit, uh, give you a little bit of background on this recipe. Uh, last fall, I wanted to make a pumpkin ale, a spiced pumpkin ale, very popular style of beer in the fall. At the Brewer's Jam each year, uh, the brewers that do bring out pumpkin ales, those are always the first beers to run out at the Brewer's Jam. And I wanted to make one. Uh, so I get online, I look up some recipes. Um, I actually found a recipe for uh, Thomas Jefferson's uh, pumpkin ale. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was a home brewer, as most of the founding fathers were. And so I decided I could make one, use this as a template. And then I started looking around for pumpkin. Well, didn't want to spend the money on pumpkin since I've already sunk all the money into the grains and everything else to make beer with. So I remembered my backyard is full of butternut squash. I love butternut squash. I cook with it often. I grew a bunch of it last year. So I started looking on different websites, different forums on the internet, like Homebrew Talk and some other ones, um, and seeing if anybody else had used butternut squash ale in a beer. Well, all the feedback I got said, go for it. It will make your beer better tasting than a spiced pumpkin ale. And I find that to be true. If you're making a five gallon batch, you're going to need about 12 pounds of butternut squash pre-processed. You know, skins, everything, pre-processed. Because you're going to process it down and you're going to get about six pounds of butternut squash. I need 12 pounds of butternut, I need, yeah, 12 pounds of processed butternut squash for my recipe. So I need a, a whole lot of butternut squash. Um, luckily, some friends of mine, uh, 7S Farms over here in South Knoxville, I met them at the Market Square Farmer's Market. Uh, I've traded them some homebrew, uh, and in return, they traded me some butternut squash. Uh, let me show you the butternut squash. I'm only about half of what I've got. I've already made a bunch of butternut squash, but I'm going to process that down, and, and I'll show you. I'll videotape what we do to process it. To get okay, so when you're processing butternut squash, a few things you'll need. I use this to collect all the peels and all the seeds and everything. I compost my organic matter. There's no reason to throw it in trash. It's great compostable matter. Um, and if you're lucky, you might get bonus um, butternut squash growing out of your compost next year. Cutting board, of course. Sharp knife. And a vegetable peeler. So what I did... And there's, you know, you can go about this any way you want. Cut off the stems. Um, I usually, sometimes I'll slice them in half this way. With these, with the small ones, I like um, getting it right above the middle where the seeds are and cutting it in half. And you got a nice butternut squash like this. And then you just peel it like it was a potato or something. Um, you want to peel until you don't see these little green lines right there. So it takes sometimes a couple of layers. And this is the reason that you start out with such more pre-processed weight than you do processed okay, weight. Okay, once you get a bunch of butternut squash processed, you want to weigh it. So take it over here to the, the scale. This is my nice handy dandy kitchen scale. I already have it teared. I have the same type of bowl. And then throw it on there. I'm guessing about five pounds. Yeah, 6.9. You want to keep going until, of course, you have 12 pounds. So I'm only about halfway there. But um, let me show you what the next step okay. is. Then. Next, what you want to do is while you're processing, you want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. And then I get some baking um, pans, cookie sheets. I use uh, nonstick foil um, because you don't you know, want a nasty pan afterwards. And then I just layer out the butternut squash. Uh, for, for, if you're making five gallon batches, you could probably get away with just a couple of um, pans. Um, I'm gonna have to do this a couple of times because I have so much squash I'm going to process. Um, but I'll show you the next step here after I finish layering out the squash because you're not done and what the reason why you're doing this is you want to bake it and caramelize the squash um, you want it to get just the 
little bit brown on top, just, you know, caramelization really helps break down the squash fibers, helps bring out the sugars in the squash, gives it a really good flavor. Um, you don't want to just throw squash and raw into your beer when you're making it. It's not going to do you any favors. Um, but yeah, you, you definitely want to get it nice and baked and caramelized. Uh, but what I do, and this is a step that I came up on my own, um, and I found it makes a world of difference, is the recipe, my, my beer recipe does call for brown sugar. Um, what I like to do is I like to take some brown sugar and just put it, sprinkle it all over. Because that's going to cook down and that's really going to add to the flavor and it's going to add to the uh, to the sugar content of your beer once you're processing it. But just especially in the hollow parts, what's going to happen you'll see is we're going to have like a little bu a bunch of liquid in there. And then all you do is you pop this in the oven. I would say pop it in the oven for a good um, 45 minutes usually. Uh, you want to check to make sure it's, like I said, a little bit brown on top. Um, caramelized is what you're looking for, not burnt. you got to be real careful about that. And I'll show you what it's like here in a little bit. All right, it's been about an hour. Um, you can see butternut squash is done. This is what I'm talking about when it's caramelized. And you can tell if it's done, you just push a fork right in, it just goes right in, no problem. You want it to be nice and squishy. That, mmm, butternut squash. You see how it has a glaze when you mush it down. That's going to mush into the actual squash. Well, there you go. That's how you prepare the butternut squash. Um, like I said, I'm doing 12 pounds, so I'll still have another pan, pan of this to cook. Um, but let me show you what we do now. Very simple. Got your big container here. And you're just going to take the squash, still steaming hot. And that's why I use no stick foil. Look at it, it just lifts right off. And that's what you want right there. If you go like that, it falls apart. That's what you're looking for. So we're just going to put all this in the pot over here. Use the fork, mash it up real good. And of course, you know, I'll show you what you're going to put this in a straining bag when you actually put it in your boil. Otherwise, all these fibers clog up your brew pot. But anyway, you get the idea. Squash in there. Oops. Poured out my yummy liquid. Out hot. And just mush up. And then you'll mix it, mix it all up. But that's how we prepare the butternut squash for butternut squash ale. Uh, next part, of course, is the actual brewing of it. So, part one is done. And I'll be back to show you what we do next.